Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Doing all right? Would you stand with me? Let's, what do you say we, we worship together in song? Here's an, a, an encouraging word, word from First Peter. You probably heard this before, but would you hear it again? I think we all need to hear this at times. It's First Peter 5, 7, and it's this. Cast all your anxiety on him. I don't know what you're coming with this morning. You could be just feeling refreshed and, and fantastic, or you might be carrying some, some worry and some fret and anxiety. Um, but it says to do this, cast all your anxiety on him, the Lord. Why? Because he cares. Because he cares for us. Would you join us in singing? Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Should the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along on me, Ruther, just remember in God's word how he feeds those little birds. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Let's sing this together. Leave it there. Leave Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your enemies are sick and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. He will make a way for you. He will guide you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. One more. Or take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I have a few announcements here. Uh, one of them is this. The super exciting Happy Happy Good Times Budgeting Workshop. Free. April 16th. April 16th. What is that right after? April 15th. I, can we just say a prayer for all the CPAs in the house? <laughs> They're carrying our burdens. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm sincere about that, but uh, super exciting, happy, happy, good times budgeting workshop is free. April 16th, 23rd, and the 30th, 6 to 8 here at First B. Uh, all of that is going to deal with like getting out of debt, saving for retirement, and just keeping it chill. Nick, Starin, Richard Yule, and Jeremy Leeper are going to be uh, kind of co-teaching this thing and helping people through it. So that's happening. Uh, Awana. Uh, yes, yeah, we are on tomorrow, and it's a theme night. I think it's hero night. Am I, hero am night. I right? Hero night. Yeah, so kids dress as their favorite superhero tonight, uh, tomorrow night. So 545, check in. Yep. Hero night. Atawana, 545 tomorrow night, be there. Uh, we, have, we had some, a new volunteer, this first time that they had done uh, the Connect Hour today, and they are down there having come in yesterday and prepared for it, and I'm pretty excited. Celicia is down there. So if you uh, would like to be a part of that, you can call Addie or sign your name up on the Fellowship Hall uh, wall down there. There's some sign-up sheets to do that. Lunch study, it's, it's on. It's on. All right, 11.55 in the Fellowship Hall. Starting, the, first Peter. starting up in 1 Peter this week. So fantastic. We'll just turn the page from James to 1 Peter. Fantastic. Okay, come and go as needed. It'll be 11.55. It'll be over at 1 o'clock. 
Uh, Jackson Hole Men's Alliance is meeting Wednesday morning, April the 10th, uh, 6.30 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. That'll be a good gathering. Jackson Hole Men's Alliance. It'll be not just First B guys, but other guys too. Come on if you uh, want to be a part of that. Hometown Nazareth, June 24th through the 27th. There's a sign up. Uh, you can do that online, firstbjackson.org, or you can do it in the lobby this morning. There's a sign up sheet out there. And um, uh, Brooke and Anders are they here? Brooke and Anders are here, and they're going to do that right before the sermon. So, yeah, Brooke and Anders are here, J Zone Ministries. Uh, so, if you would stand, I'm glad to be back. I'm thankful to Brad for preaching last week, and I'm glad to be back. We had a great time. Good to see you, though. Happy to be here. Of our God and King, lift up your voice and with the same. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him! Oh, praise Him! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll rush in when that art so strong. I'll set sail in them no long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now as the morning praise rejoice, the lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Psalm 147, it says, How good it is to sing praises to our God, and how delightful and how fitting. God, it is fitting to sing to you. You are good, and you are holy, and you are awesome. All we need to do is just take a look around at what you've created to see your handiwork and go, Wow, that's you. That's you. You're the artist of this beautiful picture that we see around us. I praise you, God. You're deserving. You're deserving of our worship this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. In Jesus, the name above. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Let's sing of his holiness. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Oh, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up 
sung it, but also uh, we pray it too. Would you open up our eyes to see more of who you are? Would you show us, God? Would you fill us with your heart? Would you fill us with your love? Would you lead us in your love to those around us? Lord, we need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if your trouble Heavy-hearted, come to Jesus and find your peace. And if you're run down, empty-handed, come to Jesus and find your strength. See, hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary. Help for the hurting is, he is mending the broken, bearing the burdens, and all that you need is. If you're wandering in the darkness, if you're wandering in the darkness, come to Jesus and find your freedom need forgiveness just come to Jesus and find his grace he is yes. hope for the hopeless rest for the weary help for the hurting he is, he is. mending the broken bearing the burden all that you need in he is and just listen to what he is here he's the comforter counselor prince of peace author and maker of everything defender deliverer king of kings he is he is helper and healer forevermore savior and shelter for every storm a refuge redeemer and lord of lords he is he is child of heaven and son of man, provider, protector, the great I am, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. He is, he is hope for the hopeless, hope for the hopeless, it's rest for the weary, help for the hurting. you need in his all that you need 
and all that you need in Him. You can have a seat here for a moment. This is the worship through giving uh, part of the service, and I invite our ushers to come on forward, and, and we're going to sing uh, a new song for us called Holy Forever. But from Colossians 1, it says, it says this, For in him, and that's Jesus, in him, all things were created, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, Catch this, all things have been created through him and for him. He's before all things and in him all things hold together. And I love this, catch this, it says he's the head of the body, the church. Before we sing this, Ray, may I ask you to pray? God, thank you for this, uh, for morning, for this morning. Um, Jesus, resurrected reigning, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Uh, Lord God Almighty, I'm so grateful, so, so grateful for Resurrection Sunday, celebrated last week, and for this ongoing uh, time of mission on earth that you are using your humble and obedient servants to carry the gospel message forward. Lord, we ask that that's what you would do here this morning, that you would implant seeds in our heart that would grow up and that would just... Um, that would blossom and bloom, um, and others would be drawn into a relationship with you. Would you do it, Lord? We ask you that you would do it. Your will, we want that done, and we want it done in your way. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask uh, for your blessing on this offering, for the gift and for the giver, and for uh, the ongoing of your good news. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
sins above and the mark And all thrones and dominions And all powers and positions Your name stands above them all And the angels cry Holy, all creation cries Uh, Brooke and Anders Olson up to the front, and they will tell you more about J Zone Youth Camps. <laughs> Mike should be on. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for having us, especially you, Ray. Um, so we are Brooke and Anders Olson. Uh, Anders grew up here. You might recognize his face. He's been around since he was a toddler. Um, so we're the directors of J-Zone Youth Camps, which is an organization in Zambia. Um, we just got done with our first full year of ministry there, at, um, the two of us. I've been there since 2019, um, and we're about to head back for our second year stint out there. Um, we really want to thank you guys for all the donations that we received from you guys this last year, and we're really excited to share what God was able to do with your guys' generous giving. Um, quick summary of what J-Zone is, if you weren't here the last time we spoke. It is a Zambian-owned, operated organization. We're the only non-Zambians who work for them. Um, and this photo is our founders and partners, Sanderson and Lewindo. And they started J-Zone in 2006 just to fill the needs of their community. And so through that, every so often we kind of branch branch off and start a new part of our ministry. So we have J-Zone Water, where we drill wells in rural communities. We have J-Zone Rural Discipleship, where we now have over 70 Bible study hubs and have trained over 100 pastors to lead Bible studies and churches in their own communities. Um, and then in the next few slides, we'll share the um, branches that Anders and I are kind of responsible for. So J-Zone Youth and J-Zone Youth Camps. All right, before we start the video, I just want to say this is our bread and butter. This is what we want to do um, with everything. So this is a day camp that we did in a village called Nampongo. Um, <clears throat> Brooks' home church in California, New Life Pismo Beach, was raising money to send kids to camp in America. And so then we were also fundraising to send kids to camp in Zambia. So it costs about 10 bucks to send a kid to camp in Zambia, which is great. Um, so this is a normal camp that we do. It's five stations. We'll do beads that represent the gospel. We'll do a dance. We'll do a message. Uh, we'll do some field games and face paint. So enjoy the short video. Thank you. 
so this is what we want to do with our property. That was about 275 kids. We have a property uh, that's 77 acres outside of town um, where we want a home to do that. Uh, this past year, we built a fence and we built a road, which are two big things for us. You can see the difference between dry season and wet season there. Um, and it was the reason that we were hired. We are the camp experts of JZone. So while we're working on building this camp, um, we have a few weekly ministries that we do, both in town and in some villages. So the first is our school programs. We're in four different schools every week, two orphanage schools, a primary and a secondary school, um, one Christian primary school, and then one village school that's kind of just all ages. Um, and so it's kind of like a good news club or like a Bible study. So we really have relationships with these kids and we go through a book of the Bible or a theme of the Bible um, and just get to hang out with them. These schools have given us their like PE period for us to come in during their school day. And so we always make sure that we get the kids running around. We taught them ultimate Frisbee this year and that's been their favorite game so far. <laughs> All right, J Kids. This is a Saturday program where we invite two local orphanages and neighborhood kids to come hang out, learn about Jesus, play games. Uh, it's a great time of the week. Uh, we also do once a month a birthday program to eat cake, smack each other with balloons. Uh, it's great. We love it. And then our newest ministry and branch that we started this year while we were in Zambia is Mother's Bags in the Pantry. So this photo is baby Emmanuel. Um, he was the first to receive a mother's bag, or his mother was. Um, so we were really inspired to start this because one Saturday we were on our way home from J Kids and we got a phone call that a woman that we had previously worked with a few times um, with J Zone was in labor and she showed up to our office for help. And so we're like, okay, we'll head right over. We'll like drive her to the hospital. We'll do all of that. And we showed up and started talking to her. She said, you can't take me to the clinic. And we're like, why? She said, I don't have any of my supplies. And we're like, why? what supplies? You just have to show up to the hospital and give birth. Um, and she showed us the list that the clinic had given her of things she needs, like umbilical cord clamp for her baby and gloves for the doctors to wear um, and like bleach to sterilize things. And if you don't have those, they will turn you away. And then your baby won't have a birth certificate and won't be able to go to school. And it just creates this vicious cycle of poverty. And so for $100, um, you can donate a mother's bag. And so we also, as we we're starting that, realize there are a lot of other needs in the community and so just normal pantry things like food and laundry detergent and soap and school supplies and things like that. Um, if you want to donate these, the best way to do it is in our monthly budget section of our website, which we'll show in a second, and you just donate the amount and write in the notes what you want that to be for. So this is our phase one construction. This is our infrastructure. This is everything that we need uh, to build camp. Uh, it's awesome that almost 90,000 has almost been raised. Um, this year, we're uh, trying to get a master site plan from some Kenyan architects so that everything can be legit. Um, and our goal is to host one camp on our property. Um, and so we will be building to that. Yeah, so the last thing that we have is our monthly budget. So those are things like our rent and our food and just the cost of living for us there. This year we've decided to increase our monthly budget by $500 um, to help cover costs like the pantry and the mother's bags and things like that. So we just have more money on hand to give back to the community. Okay, this is how we can donate. This is the only time you can take your phone out during church to scan the QR code. Um, but we'll be in the back. Uh, we'd love to answer any more questions or share some testimonies that we can't in this short time. Um, there's our website. We can talk more about donating and where to mail. Um, and yeah, we just thank you so much for your continued support and prayers and donations. Uh, and we'd love to talk to you in the back. All right, thanks for going over time, Ray. <laughs> These, for these two and for all of their compatriots there, um, I pray that you would give them a, an extended 
period of your loving kindness and grace, that it would be filling them up so much that it would draw other people into that caring, loving relationship with Jesus. I love both of these, and I'm thankful uh, to even get to know them. Uh, Lord, and as we send them back out by way of other, other churches and other places, they have to go in the States on the way back there. But I pray that when they arrive back, that there would be a fresh sense of uh, renewed purpose for them and for all of their teammates. In Jesus' name, we pray for every soul that they will encounter along the way. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resurrection and ascension. That's where we are. So we have been doing a harmony of the gospel study for how long? Anybody know? Two years? Long time? A year and a half, probably. Um, And usually I do it like this. And I say, okay, this is the whole text that we're going to cover. And then we cover all of that from all of them. This week, I am going to Nick's Luke. Luke is long. I knew that we were going to have missionaries speaking this morning. And I know we have communion, so I thought... I'll come back to Luke. I'm not going to skip anything, so I'll come back to Luke. I've already preached through Luke about five times the resurrection section since I've been here. I went back and counted. Uh, Mark. Mark, I believe, Mark ends right there at 16.8. But it does have, in some of your Bibles, you'll read 6, 9, 16, 9 through 20. And you're like, what? That's a textual situation that would take me 30 minutes to explain. I'm going to nix that for today. And since I'm nixing that one, we're going to do just Matthew. So Mark 16, 1 through 5 tells the story of the ladies arriving at the tomb to find it open. And it ends right there. At, they went out and they fled from the tomb. They were trembling and astonished. Astonishment in Mark is a big deal. They are constantly astonished by what God is doing. Mark is traditionally Peter's story as transcribed by Mark. And so, having ended the story right there, they at first said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. They kind of stops. That stops the story. And so, 16, 9 through 20 continues the story. Sounds a lot like Matthew with a few added details, but I don't want to go into it today. I promise you, I will tell you about it if you ask me. I'll send you to places that are great. I'll give you books if you need them, but we'll come back to it at some other. It's a disputed passage that we're going to skip. So there we go. It looks like family feud. We've got three X's. We're going to get the right answer right here in a minute. Now, after the Sabbath, after the Sabbath, that's Friday night at sundown to Saturday at sundown. After the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards first day of the week, last week, y'all celebrated Resurrection Sunday. And Brad went from a perspective from Paul talking about how important the resurrection is. And it is. We can see the Gospels as passion narratives with long introductions. That's what one of my professors constantly called. The Gospels are all passion narratives. It's about the cross. But the cross would be nothing if he didn't rise. That's what Brad's sermon was about last week. Resurrection is where it's at. So now, after the Sabbath, it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. By the way, We have people spread all over the world during this spring break time. We had people in Taiwan. We had folks on the East Coast during earthquakes. They are scary. We were in we were in Costa Rica this time. We went through several in Costa Rica. This is the explanation that Matthew gives. A severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. It's a big stone. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook from fear of him and became like dead men. So they passed out. All right. They're knocked out. Out of fear. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. He didn't say that to the soldiers, by the way. (laughs) Or maybe he did. They just didn't have any context for it. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. Makes sense. You're coming to the place where they laid him in the tomb. But he's not here, for he has risen, just as he said he would. Now remember back, he's told them over and over and over and over again that he was going to rise from the dead. He told Mary and Martha, not these Marys, but Mary and Martha, that, that if they believed, they would see the resurrection, right? 
He's not here, for he's risen, just as he said. Now you come and see the place where he was lying. How huge a sentence is that? This place where this dead man was lay, lying down. Come see where he was lying. And then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Now, in the first century, probably the people that were the least likely to be um, believed were women. So I got a couple of nods in here like, yep, we're used to that. <laughs> Jesus has been talking about an upside down kingdom for so long. And he's been talking about humility. And he is, he is showing something, I believe, in appearing first to the ladies. Go and tell them. Now, Mark does say in the part that I skipped, Mark does say, and nobody believed him. There are also two men walking on the road to Emmaus, Luke tells us, and nobody believed them either. Go quickly. Tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, all of y'all, and behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and said, Rejoice! And they came up and they took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. That is the response. That is the response for the risen Savior. When you encounter the risen Jesus, the response is to worship him. Right? That's their response. Can you imagine? Then Jesus said to him, don't be afraid. Go, bring word to my brothers. He doesn't say disciples here. That's an interesting, people have all kinds of theories as to why, but it's an interesting thing. Go and bring word to my brothers. Actually, it doesn't just include just men, brothers, brothers and sisters, if it's not stipulated. So he's saying, go tell everybody. Go tell them. Tell my peeps to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now, while they were on their way, some of the men from the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. Whew, that's a hard news to carry back. Now, well, who were the guards? Were they Roman guards? Or were they temple guards? Hmm. It says Roman guards in some of the other gospels. But these guys going back, I doubt a Roman guard is going to go back and report to the chief priest. He's not going to do that. So it was not just Roman guards. They were temple guards. And they're going back to say what had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave those people a large sum of money to the soldiers, to those soldiers. Gave them a large sum of money, and they said, you're to say this. Now, his disciples came at night, and he stole them while we were asleep. Now, for a Roman soldier, that would not work. That's a death sentence. You were asleep on the job. This guy, you know, they got in. Actually, messing with a tomb of a, the dead is, is a pretty high offense in most ancient cultures. His disciples came at night and stole them while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, if Pilate hears anything about it, we will appease him and we will keep you out of trouble. Now, they had some sway. They had had some sway that they proved over the last week. Pilate declares him innocent five times. Other people declare him innocent several other times during the trial. And they crucified him anyway. So... The governor does have some sway, but they have sway over him. We will appease him. We'll keep you out of trouble. And they took the money. They did as they had been instructed, a large sum of money. They did as they had been instructed. And this story has been widely spread among the Jews. And it is to this day. It actually is to this day. Still, that's still one of the ways. I'm working through this rather quickly, and I know it. But I'm working towards something. So, 16, verse 16 says, But the eleven disciples proceeded towards Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated them. They set this up ahead of time. He'd already said, I'm going to do this. Even when they weren't understanding that he was really going to rise from the dead, he was like, Now, tr just listen. Just listen to me. This is the place in Galilee. And when they saw him, now what's the response? When they saw him, what would the response be? The response of the ladies was that they worshiped him. 
The response of these guys, it says, and they worshiped him. That is the response. That is the response. But let's come back to the next line. I'm going to skip a few words right here and go to what we all know as the Great Commission. We had missionaries speak this morning. How many times do you have missionaries speak and you have to do the Great Commission? Well, we hit it naturally this morning, right? On time. When they saw him, they worshiped him. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority, all authority in heaven and on earth, that's pretty inclusive, all authority on heaven and in earth has been given to me. Now, people squabble and they wonder, well, didn't he have all the power already anyway? He's Jesus. He's part of the Godhead. Well, before the resurrection, and in Philippians, it says that he had emptied himself. He had emptied some, himself of some of his divine attributes. He had emptied himself in the garden when he prayed, not my will, but your will be done. Filled with the Spirit, but absolutely human, he was not exercising all authority in heaven and on earth. But because he walked out perfect submission to the Spirit, because he worked out perfect humility, because he was tempted in every way just as we're tempted, but yet was without sin, at the resurrection, he was given, no doubt about it, all authority in heaven and on earth. And it's been given, Jesus says, to me. And because of that, go, therefore... Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, looking through that, all is everywhere in there, isn't it? It's all over the place. All authority, go to all the nations, follow all that I've commanded you, and I'm with you, I added a nail, always. I'm always there. But there are a couple other things I want to mention. Grammatically speaking, the go, sometimes I know what it's like to sit in the congregation. My whole life I sat in congregations, you know. And you sit in the congregation and you sit out there and when they start to preach about the Great Commission, you start to look around like, I'm not going to be going to Zambia anytime soon. Maybe Costa Rica. Taiwan. Hmm. Nova Scotia, Indonesia. The go right there is a participle. Now, <laughs> it's interesting that in here, the only imperative is make disciples. So imperative is a command. The command is be making disciples. Go is as you are going. Be making disciples as you are teaching. Be making disciples as you are baptizing. I'm looking forward later on in the month, this month, we get to baptize a couple of little ones. And I love that. All of us are responsible under this great commission. But it is not that all of us will go to Africa or all of us will go to wherever. But all of us will be going. As long as we're drawing breath, we're going. We're on the go all the time. All authority has been given to Jesus. So be going and making disciples. Be making disciples. How do you do that? I had one other professor in seminary. He has since passed. And he said, what's the Great Commission? And everybody says, go, therefore. Go. Go make disciples, baptizing and teaching. He said, well, you teach them. That's how you make disciples, by the way. Teach them to obey all that I've commanded you. It's in the obeying that you're teaching people to obey. It's in the practice of Christianity that you're doing that. When you see the risen Savior, if you are worshiping him, that calls other people to notice what's going on. Be doing the making of disciples. Is an, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. As you are going, as you are teaching, as you are baptizing, as you are Teaching them what? To follow all that I've commanded you. The all in here is so inclusive. It's so right in front of us in our lap all the time. Now I'm going to go back to that. 16 sets up the Great Commission. But the love of disciples proceeded to 
Galilee to the mountain, or 17 does, to the mountain which Jesus had designated them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Some were doubtful. That, that were doubtful is like theologians argue over this all the time. Theologians have written books. I have one of the books that's like, what does this even mean? Who is it? Who are the some? And why were they doubting? This is Jesus. These are the 11. It says it right there. Is it the 11? Is it some extra folks that were there? Is it, who is it? And what were they doubting? This is the resurrected Jesus. That's hard to believe, people. It's hard to believe. This is an aorist active indicative third person plural for those of you who care. <laughs> From distazo. Waver, doubt, or hesitate. Properly, it is going two ways. It is shifting between positions, choosing a double stance. Hence, it is to vacillate, to waver. It's uncertain when you're at a crossroad because you're refusing to choose one way or the other. Some were like that. They're like, oh, I don't know. It's either maybe, I'm not sure. It's this. Could just be hesitate. It could just be some of them hesitated. But it's to halt between two opinions. When you go back and look at that and you say, and they, they saw him and they, they wanted it to be true and they worshiped him. And we gather, we come on Sundays and we gather, we, we want to worship him. We know that, well, I, be, I believe it's true. Yeah, I believe it's true. But Jesus' answer to their doubt was to some of them that doubted. Jesus' answer to their doubt was this. He came up to spoke and spoke to them and he said, all authority has been, you can rest in this. I have the authority to give you this. All authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. There's no reason for you to doubt. He's assuring them. He's comforting them. And then he says, and as y'all are going, as you're going, be making more disciples. If you go to John 17, where he prayed, he prayed for his disciples that were there, the three that were there, the 11, the one that would be added, the rest of them. He says, not just these who have seen me and been with me, but the ones who will believe because of their word. It wasn't just for the eyewitnesses. It was for the ear witnesses. It was for those of us who would eventually hear because people have trusted in Christ. His answer to their doubt is, I have the authority. Go and be making disciples of the nations. Be baptizing them into an all-inclusive name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinitarian formula. Teaching them to follow all that I've commanded you. And he doesn't stop there. For their doubt, he says, and behold, I'm always with you. I'm always going to be there with you, even to the end of the ages upon the ages. I am with you. There's no need to doubt. Now, history tells us of what happened to those 11. The resurrection of Christ is not something that is lightly handled. They all believed it because it was true. None of them died doubting. They died martyrs, deaths, believing and proclaiming the resurrection and seeing the church grow. And if you shy away from this this is the very foundation of the church. It's the very foundation of Christianity. You don't have to understand it completely to believe it. You don't have to doubt because he is with you. And there is no theological argument against a transformed life. Okay? We're going to a time of communion right here. I think that's the last slide. It's the last thing in Matthew. I'll invite the elders to come forward and the band to come up too, I think. Are we playing, Carl? Good. Would y'all pray with me? God, thank you. I thank you that you are so good to us. I thank you that you're with us. I thank you that you accompany us everywhere that we go, that you do live on, that you're seated at the right hand of the Father, that you were bodily resurrected, and that you ascended. Lord, I'm thankful, very, very, very thankful that you did that. I'm thankful that you continue to speak in your word. I'm thankful that you continue to speak by impressing upon us by your spirit. I'm thankful that you walked out a perfect life and did not deserve the death. 
that you took, that you were actually innocent. And we are actually guilty, but you declare us to be free. By your stripes, Lord, we're healed. In Jesus' name, we gather this morning, and in Jesus' name, we ask for your blessing on this little representation of the body of Christ, this little oyster cracker. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you would bless. For everyone who would partake, um, I pray that you'd bless them, Lord. I also pray that you would forgive us of all of our shortfall, Lord, that you'd forgive us, that we would take this worthily, that we would know that we have trusted in you, that we're not trying to do anything ourselves, that we trust in you. Would you help us where we waver and hesitate and doubt? Would you help us in that? Help us with our unbelief. As we take this, we're saying we trust you. We trust in you. We want for you to be Lord in our life. In Jesus' name, I ask your blessing. Amen. How deep the Father's love for me how that beyond all measure that he should give his only son to a wretched treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turned his face away. the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread after supper and he gave thanks for it. And he said to his disciples in the room, and his voice rings to us today, this is my body, which is given for you voluntarily. Take this, take it in and do it each time that you will in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I ask that you would bless this little plastic cup of grape juice, this representation of your blood here. For all who would partake, Lord, I pray that they would feel an enduring sense of your presence and that we would uh, carry forth as we are going by carrying out what you've commanded of us. In Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, that uh, you would bless this time of remembrance. Amen. Jesus 
is gone How we come to the end of sail Do you thirst for and drink from the well Jesus is gone We'll come to the altar The Father's arms are Mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus and over the sea also took the cup after supper and he said to his disciples there this is the new covenant in my blood take this and drink of it and do it as often as you will in remembrance of me amen amen and paul says that as often as we do this we proclaim his death until he comes again the resurrected savior matters he is with us to the very end of the age. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you would let us feel that as true as it is. Uh, may we never be uh, doubting. And when we are, bring us back. Bring us back, Lord. Bring us back around in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing one more song. Holy water. Take me to the riverside 
take me under, baptize and need you. Oh God, I need you. And your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. I like the sound of the symphony to my ears. It's like a holy water on my skin. the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Oh, I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Oh, I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really me want to change your forgiveness it's like sweet sweet honey on my lips it's like the sound of the symphony to my ears it's like holy water on my skin Hey, what's the book? Here it is. I pray that out of his glorious riches, oh, so good, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. May it be so. Amen.